Yes, guys, welcome to the channel. Andy Carter here. Thank you so much for checking out today's video because I am sure this is going to be an absolute corker. Okay, that's a very English term. For them, anyone else watching and around the world, this could be a corker, which means it could be an absolute cracker. Cracker could also mean fantastic because we're talking about the 58 degree. It's a lob wedge. Whether you've got a 58, a 60, or a 62, if you've got a 64, snap it over your knee completely unnecessary. Um, we're going to be talking about the scenarios in which you would use this club and why it can be so beneficial. Why I think every golfer should have one of these in the bag. Now, I grew up being told by my coach that if you're a good wedge player, if you're a good chipper, if you're a good bunker player, you don't need a 60 or a 58, whatever. Ah, disagree. As a golf coach now, twen probably what? 25 years later from listening to that advice, I think this is one of the most important golf clubs in the bag for the majority of golfers, and especially for the ones that play bogey golf, because you're in and around the green in two on a par four, and you're gonna be chipping for a three. So this club could give you some seriously good control. If you use it in the wrong place, it can be so detrimental, but when used correctly, it could seriously lower score. So let's get stuck into this video, and let's find some scenarios to use it. Scenario one is an absolute classic. It's over the bunker, short-sided ourselves. We've got 60 degrees aloft. This is exactly when you would use it. This is two reasons why you would use it. A, two reasons, A and B. Two reasons, number one, is the rough. The rough is gonna prevent spin, okay? So grass gets stuck between the golf ball and the club face and the grooves, obviously and it reduces the backspin on the ball. So we often take more loft because a more lofty club creates more backspin, but also what it's gonna do is create a higher launch angle. Therefore, the angle of the club, the ball landing on the green is also steeper, so it's gonna have less forward roll. So from the rough, I would use a lob wedge, and for the fact that I'm going over this bunker, I would also use a lob wedge. Now, I don't need loads and loads of height to get over this bunker, but I just need height to stop the ball. Now, again, this is the scenario as to whether, what sort of level of golf you are. Do you hit a shot that goes off towards the right-hand side and you just hit it onto the green and take your two put? Have you got a less of a handicap where actually you could really do with getting up and down here to save a par? Now, again, st from a statistical point of view, getting up and down, the odds are always very small because we need to get the put within, we need to get the chip within side of three foot to be able to hold the put. That obviously, as we all know, it doesn't mean you can't hold a six to 10 footer. So I often think, right, we go for the slightly safer side of this flag, which is slightly to the right of the flag. The ball is going to be landing on a down slope. So I'm going to show you how to play the high shot. Okay, so we've got a 58 degree. Ball position is going to go on the inside of my left thigh. The hand, my hands are going to stay just slightly to the right of the ball, which is going to help me add a little bit more loft. I don't want any shaft lean towards the target because that's going to deal off the club face, which is completely opposite of what I'm trying to do. So ball position on the left heel, hands behind the ball. I'm going to play a standard little chip shot and the ball has popped up nice and high and stopped very fast. Stopped really, really quick. Now, what you'll have seen there, I didn't go for the big wide open club face and the big high golf swing for the big flop shot. I didn't need to. I've got 58 degrees of loft in my hand, okay? 58 degrees is a lot of height. All I'm trying to do really here, ball position forward, shaft lean is actually going behind the ball, so I'm probably making the 58 already into a 60. And I'm just gonna try and make sure that I maintain the loft on the club face. So this requires a slightly different use of the wrist. As you're going through the shot, the club face wants to be pointing back at you after the shot, you don't want to see the face rolling to the left as we look at it, okay? Because that's releasing the face. I want to release the club face more upwards into the air so it adds a lot more height. And you'll see that I'm not trying to make a big stressful swing. And I've left both those chip shots around about 10 foot, just eight foot. There's a chance of holding them. If you're a higher handicap golfer, this will put the fear of God into you. Okay, now if I'm looking at this green here, it all slopes from right to left. So I'm actually gonna play the same technique as I just played for this other shot, but with a little bit less danger with the line. So I'm gonna put the ball position forward in my stance, get the shaft, the shaft of the head just behind the golf ball. And I'm just gonna play the swing a little bit longer, 
but slower. So now I'm still hitting the green, but I've just left myself pin high with a longer putt. So playing clever, getting yourself into two putt territory can often lower scores over the course of a year rather than just thinking that this one time that was quite negative. And actually over the time, it's probably not. The second scenario we're going to be looking at is a chip again from the rough. Again, we'd always use lob from the rough, especially when you're in and around the greens, when the green is now running away from you. Every shot we're going to see here today is all about spin. Everything I'm going to demonstrate is a shot that's re naturally reducing the spin on the ball because of the situation that you're in. So all we're going to be doing is, all I'm doing here is clubbing up to add some of that spin back on. Now I've got the ball going to be running down the slope. It's going to be very, very fast. Okay, I've not got a bad lie. The rough here is not too bad. So you could find yourself in a bit more of a tricky situation. But for what I'm doing today, it doesn't look too bad. Going downhill, it's going to run away from me. I'm just going to get the ball position. I'm going to keep it in the center of my stance. I'm just going to get the hips and the shoulders to work together. And very short, I'm very close to the green, so I'm not going to need to hit this ball very hard. I just need to pick my landing area. The normal landing area for a, for a lob wedge might be two thirds of the way there. Because of this slope, I'm actually going to land it about one third. And I'm going to let the slope do the rest. So it's landed about a third of the way. It's taken the slope. And if I'm being a bit picky, I didn't really read the green very well, but it's worked out to be a very good shot. Again, it's a club that you would normally land very close to the flag. Well, two thirds of the way there. But on this instance, we've got to try and allow for a lot of roll because of the slope. Again, about landed about a third of the way there. This time I've allowed for a bit more of the break and it's just trickling next to the hole. That makes me feel good, I'll be honest. Right, third and last scenario. You may, you may agree or disagree with this, so you please do comment below. I've got a chip that's coming off the fairway, so I could create a little bit of backspin with a decent strike, but it's all running away from me, okay? I am worried for golfers that pull out a flat-faced putter, a flat-faced wedge like a pitching wedge or a, maybe even a nine iron or an eight iron because the difficulty of controlling the chip and run shot when it's running away from you is tough. It's the difficulty level is high. Now, I completely understand that everyone right now is typing, I'd put it, I'd put it, because yeah, that's fine. Purely based on this circumstance, when you've got a green that's running away from you, try to bring a club out that's gonna create more spin to stop it running as far, okay? So yeah, I would agree that if you might actually want to use a putter for this particular shot, but there are gonna be instances where you've short-sided yourself, you've got half fairway, half green, and once it's on the green, it's gonna run away. Now, what we're gonna do with this shot, and this is, a, I teach this every single day because it's, it's not foolproof because we can make a fool of ourselves doing it, but it's a, such a simple shot, okay? We're gonna get the toe of the club, we're gonna stick it into the ground, and we're gonna lift the heel up. So what that's gonna to do to the shaft angle from a normal setup, it's gonna make the shaft angle almost 90 degrees relative to the ground. What we're gonna do then is we're gonna bring the stance really close to the ball, narrow the feet up, and we're just gonna put it. So we're gonna use the little 58 degrees of loft to cover the fairway, and then it's gonna land off a soft landing, like a dead landing because of where I've hit it from in the club, and it's gonna trundle down the slope. There we go. Landed at the edge of the fringe, died on the green, and just trundled down the slope. I literally couldn't have called it. I'm worried about having to try and do that three more times now. But honestly, it's such an easy shot. Now, one thing you've gotta be careful of, and what I see a lot of my players do sometimes as well, is they get here and they panic. The minute that happens, you are in trouble, regardless of the club you've tried to play. Because there, we're gonna to start to shallow the angle and it hits the middle of the ball. We still need to brush in to the ground, okay? So let's try that again. I'm gonna land it just on the fringe. Watch that, watch that first bounce. Just a little pop forward, slightly more dead second bounce. That was a bit fiery, that one, but look where it's finished. It's not the end of the world. And if you live in the general terms of a chip and a two putt, that should be a two putt. Also, the better you get at chipping, the better you, the better you understand how the clubs work and the different types of shots that you can play, 
then the more chances you've got of chipping and one putting. Just gonna try that one more time. Get that little dead landing as it lands on the second bounce. Bit short, bit short. Slope's gonna take it though, it's got enough. Told you I couldn't live up to that first shot. I absolutely nailed it perfect. All right, so there's the three instances of where I would use a lob wedge. Give it a try at your local golf club. When you're out in the next time, if you just instantly pull out a 46 or a 56, think, is this a lob wedge shot? Am I in the rough? Have I got a bunker to go over? Is it fast downhill? Really important times to use a lob wedge to add on that little bit of spin that the situation, the scenario is not allowing you to do. Guys, if any comments below, please do get involved, interact as ever. Always wanting to talk. I was gonna say willing to talk. I'm not not willing to talk, I want to talk. So please do drop in the comments section below. Also, if you like this video, think it adds value to your golf game, please do hit the like button. And also, as ever, please subscribe to the channel. But I will see you again from a gloriously sunny Dubai next time for some more golf tips.